All right, guys. Hey, welcome back. Uh, like I said, I am Justin with Justin Nutrition, owner and founder. Uh, as the last video mentioned, we talked about how to calculate our macros and we even defined what they simply are. So today we are going to continue with that in the sense that we're going to talk about two topics that are hot topics, I guess you could say, that people debate constantly. Clean foods versus dirty foods. It fits your macros versus eating healthy, eating clean 100% of the time, as well as just some diet tips just in general that I recommend that's going to help you reach your physique goals or at least make you more consistent and kind of uh, focus on them. So today we're going to talk about clean food versus dirty food, which I, I personally hate that, those terms because you don't clean your food with like Windex. You know, it's not clean like that, um, and nor is the food dirty. You're not throwing it in the dirt. Uh, we, I get what you're saying, but I think the proper term would be, you know, nutrient dense versus nutrient poor foods. Um, you know, we all know the nutrient dense foods. We have the chickens, the sweet potato, the oats, um, you know, the lean meats, the vegetables, the fibrous uh, fruits and vegetables as well. I mean, these things that, you know, you're supposed to eat, the things that are just high in nutrients. And that's what it is. They're dense in nutrients. That's why they're called clean. So to kind of clarify anything, they're dense in micronutrients. They're, you know, the food is going to be naturally grown, organic. Um, you know, there's not going to be added chemicals or any processed foods, high fructose corn syrup, you know, things like that. Um, and to touch with that, it's kind of, I want to say, you know, based off your lifestyle. You know, when you're coming to the decision of how you want to approach things, it really is about how you, how you are as a person and what's going to be best for you to be consistent. Because that ultimately is the best. It's like, it's ultimately the best thing for you is consistency and making it into a lifestyle. Uh, I preach with this with my clients that I want to find, you know, a diet that you're going to enjoy, but at the same time be as effective as possible. I'm not going to put on, you know, I... I lifestyle nutrition so I have clients that uh, don't do competitions don't prep but they just want to diet they want to feel good look good well that is equally as important as the conference prep because consistency is the most important thing if you're going to you know make this a fad you're gonna you're gonna fail right away if you look at, at an ending point then you're gonna fail regardless of if it's a show regardless of if you're just trying to lose 10 pounds you're gonna fail if you say I want to do this and then be done the goal that I try to, I guess the lifestyle that I try to implement is to create balance, to create something that you enjoy and something that's going to prevent you from going back to how you work. I mean, I would rather a person eat clean or nutrient dense food 90% of the time and enjoy themselves that 10% and still reach their goals and enjoy the process and learn how to manipulate the process to best fit them but would stay healthy than to tell them they have to eat 100% clean chicken rice, chicken rice, and that's it to reach their goals. But then as soon as they're done with me, they go back to eating McDonald's and, you know, Burger King and, you know, fries and just all the fatty foods. But it's fine. To, it's, it's okay as long as you do something, those things in moderation. I mean, I would be lying to say that all I eat is chicken and rice and, um, you know, veggies and all that stuff. And I don't enjoy myself occasionally with a donut or a slice of pizza. Or, but I don't do it in excess because I don't have the cravings because I have created a lifestyle for myself to where I don't have those binges. I don't need to binge on a whole pack of Oreos. I'm okay with having two or three, you know, every other couple of days or, you know, one a day or having a sweet tooth every here and there. So the biggest thing I would say, you know, hit your numbers, have your foods, hit your micronutrients, hit your macronutrients properly. Don't go overboard. But also enjoy yourself. Define the person you are. You know, if you're like wanting to be that chicken rice person, great, then be it. And no one has the right to make fun of you for that. But for the people who only clean, stop looking down on the people who, you know, are flexible in their diet because it is a proven science that it works. Um, and it doesn't mean that we, you know, flexible dieters eat like crap all the time, but you have to, you have to eat nutrient dense foods to overall reach your values and overall. Be a healthy person it is a lifestyle so with that being said the take-home message is find what best suits your life 
find something that is personalized to you, but at the same time allows you to have the freedom that you, you, you want. You know, the whole point of this is to enjoy your lifestyle, not to feel like you have to go to the gym, feel like you have to eat healthy. No, look good, feel good, and be good. Simple enough. So with that, we're going to move on to another topic now. Um, and that's just going to be me kind of giving you some just fun diet tips that I would recommend, uh, regardless if you're a flexible diet or regardless if you're a you know, clean eater. Uh, these things are, they're going to help. Um, and they're simple. You know, this is nothing crazy. You've all heard this before. Uh, to start off, you know, prepare your food. Regardless of if you're, if you fit your macros type of person, regardless if you enjoy kind of like guessing around throughout the day and trying to fulfill, you know, as a puzzle, you know, all your macros together to make it reach at the end of the night, prepare some of your food. Have chicken right away, always. Have, you know, rice or pasta or lean meat cooked up. Reason being is, you know, there's going to be times where you're going to come home after an 8, 10, 12 hour work day where you have to go to the gym and you're just tired or you're sick or you're just not feeling good. You're not feeling up to it or you just want to give up after, you know, a couple of weeks or a couple of months that you just want to eat some kind of processed food. And, you know, sometimes it can work. It can You can make it work for you. But to have readily available nutrient dense foods that are just better sources like that is going to prepare you for success. I mean, you've all heard the phrase, you know, lack of preparation, you know, prepare for failure, or, you know, however it goes. But it's a matter of being prepared. Another simple but so overlooked thing is to drink water. Drink so much water. Your body is sixty is comprised of 60% water. I mean, it has so many effects on cellular fluidity, um, thermogenesis, uh, you know, heat production in the endocrine system, clear skin. Energy uh, dehydration is has so many negative effects on you that you should not not be drinking water. If you're not shooting around a gallon a day, you should. And regardless of what that means, you have to do. You know, if you need to be that guy having a gallon of water with you everywhere you go, who cares what people say? You're healthy. <laughs> if you need to, you know, have a water bottle and just like mark it with a tick or something with a sharpie, who cares? Whatever you gotta do, write motivational things. I don't care. Just drink the water. It will help more than anything, I promise. Okay, so we got drink water, prep your food. Another thing I would recommend, space out your protein. Um, you know, I'm an advocate of, you know, having smaller meals throughout the day to kind of keep you full. I'm not a person to implement it necessarily because from the research that I've currently read, you know, there's not a big thermogenic effect of eating six small meals a day versus eating two large meals. But I do think it's beneficial to kind of reduce the risk of overeating. Um, so I would say, but I would definitely say space out your protein. Let your body have a constant kind of influx of protein throughout the day, regardless of this casein or whey, um, any kind of protein that you're taking, you know, space it out as much as possible. Obviously you're wanting a good amount, you know, right after your workout, similar with carbs before and after, but with the protein, I do think it helps, you know, keep satisfaction or fullness. Um, and just muscle preservation to space out throughout the day. With that being said, I would also say, you know, regardless of, you know, losing weight or, you know, trying to put on size, carbon, carb intake is of extreme importance. People look back, look down on carbs for so many reasons of the media and just for our the past generations have kind of, I guess, looked down on, but make sure you're getting your carbon take, unless you're, you know, if you're trying to keep a ketogenic diet or if you're doing carb cycling, that's one thing, but don't be afraid to have carbs at night. <laughs> the whole myth of carbs at night are bad is nothing but a myth. There's oftentimes in my day that I work, you know, 12 hour days, I'm back and forth with clients that I don't have a lot of time to eat all my food. I do the best I can to prepare my food, but I don't have a lot of time to eat my food. So I'll, I'll consume the majority of my carbs at night. And it has done nothing ever to hinder my, you know, progress of dieting down for a show. Um, I, I've done this during prep. I've done this during non-prep. Um, but I would definitely recommend it. Let me see what else we have here. Ah. <laughs> So we already 
preached consistency. Um, we've already preached, you know, being thorough. But the final thing I would say is don't, don't define yourself by the number on a scale. You see so many people just let the scale dictate how their mood is, how they live, you know, how they define their progress. No one sees the scale besides you. No one does. I have I had so many clients that we were at work for 12 weeks and they've lost four pounds. And they're like, I've only lost four pounds. I'm like, okay, but let's look at your before and after. You're three or four inches less on your waist, your arms are down, your hips, you know, every, your thighs are narrower, you're more defined. The scale is just a number. It's useful to an extent, but let the mirror judge how you feel, how you feel, how you feel, and what other people are saying about you. With that being said, um, I appreciate you guys tuning in, you know, checking out my first video. Uh, you know, being the first video, it's always going to be a little bit rough, so I only hope to get better with here with you guys. Um, but I'm really, really looking forward to hearing you guys' comments. Um, let me know what you guys want to hear about. Um, engage with me, and I'll engage with you in the sense that, you know, I'm going to do my best to help you guys out. That's kind of what I want to do. I want to be able to supply you guys with information that you can trust, that's going to be beneficial for you, for your goals, for your lifestyle, um, you know, exercises that you might not think about, or it's proper technique on exercises, motivation videos to maybe help inspire you on those days that you don't want to lift, you get out of bed, or just bust your ass. Just, you know, techniques to be successful. I mean, I'm far from, you know, being where I want to be in life, but I think I'm on the right path, and I'm hoping to help you guys be on the right path as well. So with that being said, you know, I put all the links to, you know, my Instagram, my Facebook page, my website, um, and my email, all those. So I'm hoping to hear from back from you guys, uh, hoping to keep in contact with you and kind of get to know some of you guys. But yeah, have a great day, guys. Go lift something, get huge.